You can be seated. God is faithful. You know, we, uh, we baptize a lot of people over the years in the other church, in this, in this baptistry. And uh, I'm really excited about what we're going to see coming, amen? I really look forward to seeing many, many souls come from the north, the south, the east, and the west and come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now, we're a church that are very fortunate. We say we take temporary families and we bring them to a permanent place because there are families and souls that come from all over different states, some different countries, and we get an opportunity to speak into their life, watch them get saved, and take it on a mission wherever they go. It's exciting, amen? I want to begin to talk about some of the things we've been dealing with for the last several weeks. One, I was talking about how it's important that we do life together. I spoke a lot about how it's important for us not only to do life together, but to help those that maybe need a little nudge, a little help, help them along the way. We've been dealing with being a good steward with our, with our time and also talking about have, having that peace that passes all understanding. Now, I said all that because it all leads to what I'm going to talk about today. I believe it's God's plan, without a doubt, in my mind, it's God's plan for us to live a blessed life. Yes. Amen? God wants us to be on the increase. God did not come to knock us down. God came to lift us up. Come on, somebody. God came so we can have life with an abundance. God's ultimate plan from the very beginning was to bless you and I. Now, what I'm going to do for just a moment, just bear with me, but I'm going to highlight and I'm going to run through some of these scriptures talking about blessings and God's blessing for us in our life. It begins early on in Genesis 1, verse 22. And God blessed him saying, be in fruitful and multiply. I think some of y'all are doing a really good job. Amen? I know my kids are doing a good job. Amen? I think my son has about 22 kids, but that's all right. God is good. Amen? Being fruitful and multiply. We keep reading Genesis 1.26. He says, then God said, let us make man in our image. And that's awesome. Amen. Nothing else is made in the image of God except for man. Amen. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created man, male and female. He created them. Verse 28. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves in the earth. God wants us to walk in his blessings. Amen? Now, we find in another place where we talk about Abraham. Abraham's leaving home. God is asking Abraham to take and go somewhere else. And he's going with him, and all of a sudden, he's going to bless him with a promise. The promised son. But this is what he says. He says, God said here in Genesis 12, he said, I will make you a great nation. Now, remember, in chapter 11, we dealt with over here in 11, you got the, uh, um, the Tower of Babylon. Now, the Tower of Babylon was trying to make themselves a great nation. They weren't looking for the blessings of God. They were trying to do all the blessings themselves. And also now in verse 12, this is what he reads here. It says, I will make you a great nation. I will what? I will bless you. And make your name great. God is trying to bless them. And he says, you shall be a blessing. Verse 3, he says, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curse you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Listen, I'm telling you, it's important. I just want to throw this in on a little side note. Listen, anytime you get an opportunity to pray for Israel, pray for Israel. And I'm telling you, they, our country needs to make sure we stand behind Israel. Whatever's taking place, make sure it's behind Israel. No other place. That's God's people. Amen. Deuteronomy 7, 12, he's talking about the blessings. Now, here we find where it says, obedience brings blessings. Disobedience brings curses. This is not my words. This is the word of the Lord. Over here in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12, it says, Then he came, and then he shall come to pass, then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments and keep and do them. It's important that we do them. And we're going to learn in a few minutes some things about this. That the Lord your God will keep you, keep, will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your fathers. And he will love you and bless you and multiply you. God's plan is always to multiply. He will also bless the fruit of your wound and the fruit of your land, your grain, your new wine, your all, and increase of your cattle and your offspring and your flock in the land which he swore to your fathers to give you. You shall be a 
blessed above all peoples. God wants to bless you. Amen? All through here. We find over here in King David, in Solomon 112, verse 1, he's talking about the blessings of righteousness. He says, praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord. Why? Because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we walk in the fear of the Lord, again, not fright. Fear is a respect. When we learn to respect who God is, listen, wisdom will take place. And he goes on to say that it's the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandment. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. I want my descendants to be mighty. Amen? He says the generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Now let's jump over. We're going to jump over to the last chapter. We find over in the Old Testament in Malachi, he's talking about the blessings of tithing, giving our 10%, giving our tithes to the church. He says in Malachi 3.10, he says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be food in my house. And then he goes on to say something here that he's never said anywhere else. And he said, and try me in this. God is basically saying to you and I, bring it on. Amen? Bring it on. When God blesses you and he says, listen, try me in this and see if I won't do this. He says, and try me in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessings. Again, try him, watch where the blessings come. That there will be not, it says, and there will not be room enough to receive it. That's how much God wants to bless us, with an abundance. And he goes on to say, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fall, fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you blessed. He says, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Now we jump over right here in Revelation. Now, Revelation, as we read here, God is really trying to encourage us to read the word of the Lord because he gives us the word of the Lord so we can walk in the blessings of God. Because the more that we know about the word of the Lord, the more we know about how God wants us to operate in our lives. And so what he says here, he's speaking to John. He's got a prophecy to John and reads over here and he says, Revelation 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his servants. Things which must shortly take place, which are taking place today. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. In other words, he confirmed it through, through uh, uh, vision, through prophecy. Who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, to all things that he saw. Then he says, blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of his prophecy and keep those things which are written in it for the time is near. Amen? So all these areas that I talked about today is blessings that God wants to pour upon his children. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. God, I know I breeze through this quickly, but God, I pray today that what you have me say in just a moment will change our life. God, I don't want to come here on a Sunday morning and not be willing to be changed. God, I come with an open heart and open mind and an open life. God, speak it to my life. Speak it to every life that's in this place today. God, I pray here today, maybe those have come discouraged. Maybe some have come with just disappointment. Maybe some have come with the weight of the world because of family matters, because of health issues, because of financial situations. God, however they came, God, I pray that they leave victorious. God, I pray today that every word that comes from my mouth, God, is directed from the throne of grace. God, I pray today that you'll allow us to speak into the lives of every man, woman, and child in this place. God, let us begin to walk out the hope and the vision you have placed before us. God, let us walk out and walk into the blessed life, the life you intended for each and every one of us to walk through and to have. Thank you, Father, for all these things we pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Here's the first thing. Blessings, I'm saying it slow because I want you to see this. Now, some of you can think it's elementary, but you got to see it. Blessings begin with believing. Blessings begin with believing. Now, here's the fact. Many say, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh, pastor, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe. Oh, I believe. But the truth is, You only do what you believe. You can say, I believe all day long. But until you begin to do what you say you believe, do you really believe it? Or is it just empty words? Because the truth is, and I use this as an illustration because it's very simple to understand. 
These chairs, according to the, the manufacturer, are designed to actually hold about 800 pounds. Now, hopefully God numbers won't weigh 800 pounds. But you know what? It's designed to hold 800 pounds. And we can look at the chair, and we can look at design, and we can look at the well, we can look at the structure, we can look at all these things and begin to say, you know what? That's a beautiful chair, and I believe it will hold me. But until we place our posterior in into the chair, we really don't believe it. Come on, somebody. We got to walk in the fact that, God, I'm going to trust you enough to believe what you said is true. If you're going to begin to walk out this blessed life that God has planned for you, you got to believe it. You got to believe that it's so. You got to believe that God wants you to. Listen, when you do what God tells you to do, and all of a sudden God is trying to pour blessings onto you, don't reject them. Come on. You got to be careful there. Because, see, many times we do things. Because God asks us to do it, or it's the word of the Lord, and we do things, and all of a sudden, because of the way we do them, God wants to bless us back, and we're going, oh, no, 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 you're going to rob somebody else's blessing. You hear what I'm saying? Because the truth is, you've got to be careful that you don't walk in some kind of false humility. Come on. Because, see, I remember the day. I remember the moment. I remember the time when my wife and I had sold everything that wasn't tied down, and we decided we were going to go to seminary. And I remember this guy that, I, that was my coach when I was fighting Junior Olympics who was one of the meanest guys. He was mean as a snake. And this guy got radically saved. And when he got radically saved, God began to do a, amazing work in this man's life. And I remember he was the first man that walked up to, to me at that time and put some money in my pocket. And I remember just thinking, I didn't want him to give it to me because I was one that was always giving to others. But all of a sudden, I realized if God wanted me to walk out this thing called ministry, that I had to learn to receive as well as to give. And so when we do things for the kingdom of God, God wants to bless us. Amen? We've got to believe he does. Now, this is a story here, and many of us know this story, the story of Mary. Now, Mary was a young lady that obviously God believed would receive the word of the Lord. Because Mary, at any given time, she was human just like you and I. At any given time, she could have said... No, you somebody else, not me. Now remember now, Mary had to believe because what the, 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 the angel of the Lord was trying to tell Mary, Mary, you're going to have a baby. Mary was like, well, I'm, I mean, I'm not no biology major. I'm not no science major, but I believe it takes a man. Come on. And all of a sudden, Mary's like, you know what? I believe. Let it be so. And we pick up here, and it says, and it happened. When Elizabeth heard the greetings of Mary, now Mary was carrying the child, right? Was carrying the, the, the Savior, that the baby leaped in her womb, which is exciting. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke out with a loud voice saying, blessed are, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me? That the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my wound with joy. Now, that's a whole story in itself right there. Amen? When God impregnates us with a vision, he wants to put people around us that's going to cause our baby to leap. Amen? We need to be around the right people. But this is what he says in verse 45. Blessed is she, or you can put your name there, blessed is she who believed. For there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. See, she had to believe. See, if we're going to walk in the blessings of God, it begins with us believing that God wants to bless us. Now, I grew up in, in, a, in a denomination, in a small church that used to teach us the opposite. It used to teach us that you're just lucky to be a doormat. You're just lucky, look, you just be lucky if you can open the door to get into it. You're just lucky, you're just lucky, you're just lucky. And all of a sudden, I realized that was not God's purpose for my life. Because, see, it took me a long time to say this. It took me a long time to stand in this pulpit and say, you know what? I believe that God has good things for me. Come on. God has, listen, I feel like I'm highly favored from the Lord. Amen? Now, I don't know about you, and I don't mean to say this publicly, but I am God's favorite. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Now, I say that, and I, and I say it in a joking way, but see, you should be saying it too. You should be in that point where, you know what? I believe I'm God's favorite. Why? Listen, I believe God wants good things for all of us in this room. Not everyone is going to have the same thing. But I promise you, God's going to give you what you need if you believe it and begin to trust it and begin to say, God, I do believe. Now, what I want to do for just a moment, I want to talk about believing and living for Christ, okay? I want to talk about being in that place where we can receive God's blessings when we live for God and through Christ, okay? Because here's where all the blessings lie. 
All the blessings lie when we are obedient and we live and believe in Christ. And we live through Christ, not ourselves. Okay? Because we go back and we say, my righteousness are filthy rags. But I don't live in my righteousness. I live in the righteousness of Christ. And you've got to understand that. We live through Christ. Now, here is what it reads here in one place here in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge those that if one died for all, then all died. Verse 15. And he died for all. Why did he do that? That those who live should no live for those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died from them and rose again. Who are we talking about here? We're talking about Christ. Now I'll tell you in a heartbeat. There's a lot of religion that talks about their God. But I'm here to tell you today that it's only my God that said I'm going to die and he rose again on the third day. You might have John Smith do an acid in the desert. Come on, somebody. You might have all the different other denominations talking about this and that. But I'm telling you today, it's only Christ that said I'm going to die and rose again. And that's why I believe that he's my God and my Savior and my Lord. And we go on to read here. And this is some things that I want you to understand. Because believing and living for Christ takes some things. Okay? It takes some effort from your behalf. And so what I'm going to do for just a moment, I'm going to talk about some of these things that we must do if we're going to begin to walk in the blessings of God, we're going to live in the blessings of God, and we're going to walk out these things that God intended for each and every one of us to do so. Believing and living for Christ is looking to Christ. Come on, somebody. So you've got to look to Christ. The Bible says this over in um, Hebrews 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus... The author and finisher of our faith. It says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. All those things I talked about sums up right here. Looking unto Christ, the author and finisher of our faith. If we're going to walk out this life, we call this blessed life that we want to walk through because God intended for us to walk through it. The only way that we're going to do it, we can't look to man. We've got to look to Christ. We got to look upon Christ. Now, let me talk about a few things here. Many Christians today, for whatever reason, now don't shout me down when I say this, but let me finish this, okay? Many Christians today look to doctors, they look to lawyers, they even look to ministers or friends before and more than Christ. Now, by doing so, I'm not saying that I'm anti doctor, I'm not saying I'm anti law, I'm not anti minister by no means, but I'm here to tell you today that the only one that's not going to disappoint you is Christ. And before we take it to anywhere else, I'm telling you today, the first person we need to look upon is Jesus. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for medicine. My wife is living with a miracle inside of her right now. And every day she has to take medication to make sure that that kidney inside of her doesn't die. So I thank God for that. I thank God for miracles. I'm not one that's going to throw rocks at But I do know this. I do know this. That the great physician is Jesus, the one who created all things. So men would have the wisdom that they can walk through that we have today only comes through Christ. And if these guys were not looking unto Jesus, come on, somebody, don't miss out. Don't miss out on these things, okay? Now, while while we look at these things and we appreciate all these things, I said early on, and you got to see this, real and lasting hope and help can only come from the Lord. Uh, Malachi 6 says this, Therefore, I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. We've got to look unto the Lord. Amen? Here's the next one. Living for Christ is learning from Christ. Living to Christ, believing blessings is learning from Christ. That's why we go back to 2 Timothy 2.15. Many of us quoted it over the years. Study the shoulder self, approval unto God. I work with you not to be ashamed, rightly divine in the word of truth. I say this all the time. As I go back to the last thing that I said, a lot of people look to ministers. Now, I'm telling you this. Every time I say this, every time we have somebody new that hears it for the first time, I can see them suck the air out of the room. But the truth is, don't believe nothing I got to say. Read it for yourself. You need to know what the word of the Lord says for yourself. This is not some place that's trying to teach some codependent on the ministry. Listen, I'm telling you today, you need to be codependent on the Word of God. You need to be codependent. Because, listen, what happens if today they shut down every church? Come on, what happens today? And let me tell you something. I'm speaking about things that, is, that could happen. Listen, some of the things that we see today we'd have never thought about happening years ago. 
I'm not talking about something that might not happen. Praise God, I hope it never does happen. But I'm telling you today, listen, if you're dependent on the ministry, if you're dependent on man, you're dependent on the wrong person. You better learn to look to Jesus Christ. Now, let me look at some scripture here. It says here, Colossians 3, 16. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Now, we know this without a doubt. Wisdom only comes from Christ. You can have intellect. You can have knowledge. You can have all these things. You can have all these great studies. But I'm telling you today, listen, there are some people that have PhDs that's dumb as a rock. Come on. Because they're not walking in the wisdom of God. They might have intellect. They might know words this long. But I'm telling you today, the wisdom comes. We've got to look to Christ for all the wisdom. Every time you read the word of the Lord. Now, don't say, shout me down on this because I know for myself, when I was growing up in the church and I didn't understand a lot of the, the Bible would say certain things. and You'd hear the pastor say certain things or people would say certain things and you pretend like you understood what they were saying. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. That was me. I was one of those guys like, ah, didn't have a clue what he was trying to say until finally one day I realized that God wanted even the simplicity of the gospel to be understood by the least of us. God is not trying to put you in some place where you have to have a, a, a PhD in theology to understand this word. But I'm telling you today, you can call it what you want to call it, but I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Anytime you open the word of the Lord, anytime you begin the word of the Lord, stop before you begin to read it and ask. Ask him. Say, God, just begin to reveal something to me. God, just, just enlighten me. And let me tell you something. Just because you read 40 chapters or 40 verses or whatever doesn't make you any better than somebody who reads one and understands. You can read a whole bunch of them, not get anything out of it, and you want one of them that you're going to stand on. I'm telling you today, it's better to stand on one than try to thumble through a thousand and not get anything out of it. Leaning and learning, to, learning from Christ. Now, I said earlier today, many of us neglect the word of Christ. Why? Because we're too involved with personal pursuit. We're too involved with doing our own thing. Come on. All of us are involved with things sometimes just doing our own thing. Now, I'm not anti-doing things. I'm not anti-TV. I'm not anti some of these things in entertainment. I'm not anti these things. But I'm telling you today that you need to make sure that you take that time and you spend some time with God in His Word. And I say all the time that the only word you get is when you come here, you're starving yourself to death. You ever heard the old Proverbs? Black dog, white dog gets in a fight. Which one wins? The one you feed the most. The one that has the most. The same thing spiritually. If you're going to have a battle with the flesh and with the spirit, which one's going to win? The one you feed the most? Which one are you feeding today? Because that's where we need to look at today. Learning from Christ. The only way we can learn is how to, be, how to live life victorious. We must read. We must meditate on his word. And then... At that moment, when we learn to read and meditate on his word, we can overcome sin, we can overcome self, and we can overcome Satan. Romans 15, 4 says this. For what everything, for what everything were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. Now, many, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus that you may, with one mind and one mouth, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, let's jump back up. It says, for whatever things were written before were written for our learning. Scriptures might have hope. Everything that God's put in what we call the Bible that was referenced many years ago was called the canon of Scriptures. There were three things that took place. One, it had to be written by a prophet. Two, it had to be inspired by God. And three, it had to be timeless. So when we read the word that was written thousands of years ago, what makes it so real and so alive is the fact the same thing they wrote thousands of years ago is apical for us today. Everything that we read, they wrote thousands of, many thousands of years ago. Man, the same thing they wrote, they knew exactly what Bobby Joe, they knew exactly what you were going to need today for this day and this hour. That's power. That's the power of the word of God. Amen? Now let's keep going here. Blessings in life come, this is one that we quote all the time, when we don't lean on ourself but trust in Christ. Now, the scripture which we quote all the time, Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Now, I use this for an illustration today because of the word lean. Now, what he's saying here is don't even prop yourself up on what you think you know. Come on. Don't lean upon what you think is right. 
Don't lean. Listen, we need to learn to trust God's word. God's word goes against our word. Amen? Because whatever, what's the scripture I'm looking for? He took the foolishness of man to confound the wise. Some of the things that we look at that might, according to man, we look at it and we go, well, that's kind of foolish. You know what? It blows our mind because it's written by God and something happens when God blesses us with those things. Amen? Understanding that God's taking everything that we have today and is trying to enable us to study. He says, many Christians, what I want to read here today, many Christians fail when we lean or when they lean on their own self-power or sometimes we lean on our, our, our own position or our possessions. Now, again, sometimes we can have a false hope and a false, uh, I, I used the word a couple weeks ago, talking about having this, this false wholeness, having this false completeness. Because sometimes when you have finances that are able to buy things, sometimes when you don't feel whole and complete, you find yourself buying things and you start leaning on your possessions and your possessions begin to heal you. Listen, you got to be careful because that's a false healing. Amen? Are you hearing me? Everybody got this? Let's keep moving here, okay? Now, remember, the one thing that you have to know without a doubt, that we must trust in Christ today. He enables us to accomplish all our tasks, and he hears all our responsibility. He knows everything that we need. He knows before we even say it, he knows it. Psalms 37, 40 says, and the Lord shall help them. Now, here's the next one. We're talking about walking out what we call this blessed life, walking in the life that God intended for you and I. Blessings... In life come when we live with Christ, not by ourselves, okay? We need to live with Christ. And what do you mean by that? That means we need each other, okay? A two-strand, what is it? One couldn't put a thousand, two could put ten thousand. A three-strand cord is not easily broken. Let me read a scripture here. It talks about in 2 Corinthians 6.1. It's talking about the marks of the ministry. It says, we then as workers together with him. See, we need to work together with him. Amen? Don't work against him. We need to live with him. When we live with him, we can accomplish a whole lot more than living against him. Amen? When it comes to doing God's work, many fail because of lack of cooperation from and with others. I'm telling you today, you need to learn to get along with each other. Amen? It's important, and I say this all the time, and I want you to just, I, it, I say it because I want you to understand how important it is, how much we need each other. We need each other. We need each other. I need you. You need me. We need each other. And it's God's plan that we lift together, not alone. God's plan is we help each other. As I spoke about a couple weeks ago, about having, helping some people along the way that may be having a hard time for themselves. Here's what you must remember. We must remember we're not alone. Christ is with us, beside us, and within us. And he always enables us to assist those who are less fortunate. He also helps us to comfort the sick, the lonely, and even to the point where we can witness to the unsaved about Christ. Philippians 4.13 says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. I can do all things. It didn't say I can do some things. It didn't say I can do 10%. It said I can do all things. That word all means all. Amen. Now, here's one of the last ones is this, is what I want to hit you today with is this. Real blessings in life come, and this is important that we get this one, so I'm going to take it slow. Real blessings in life come when we can love as Christ loves. When we can love as Christ loves. Ephesians 5, 1 says this. Therefore, be imitators of God. In other words, do as God says, amen, as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also have loved us and given himself for us, and offering and sacrifice to God to a sweet aroma. Listen, anytime we sacrifice ourselves, anytime we sacrifice flesh, it becomes like a sweet aroma to the Lord, amen? When we actually just destroy our flesh and begin to walk in the love of Christ, it's so important that we understand this last point here. If we're going to walk in the blessings of God, you've got to love as God loves. You've got to love with an unconditioned. You've got to love in a way just like God loved you when you were unlovable. When God loved us when we didn't even love ourselves. There are people in this room, even as I speak right now, having difficult loving yourself. Maybe you're mad at yourself. 
Maybe you, 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 you're mad because you've done something you shouldn't have done. Listen, I'm telling you today, let that go and let God begin to heal that. Because whenever you heal it and allow the healing to take place in your own life, you can love others as Christ loves you. Amen? Let's keep looking here what it says here. As Christ loved us so much, he died at the cross. He took our place. And we must love others just as he loved us. First John 4 says this. We're talking about knowing God through love. Verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not, does not know God, for God is love. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son for our sins. Beloved, beloved, if God so loved us, we also, we also, we ought to love one another. Now, to sum it all up, it's simply this. Blessings in life today comes when we learn to look to him, we learn from him, and we lean on him, not on self, and we lift with him. And most of all, will become blessings in this life when we love, learn to love as he loves us. Love others. Listen. Loving for some is difficult. Why is that, Pastor? Some of you have some horrible stories. Some of you have seen some things that even in your own mind, you wonder how in the world... God let that happen. I'm not here to try to explain it. I'm not here to try to make it just reason it away. I'm here to tell you that the love of God blows my mind. I'm here to tell you that God sat one day in heaven and his father said, Jesus I need you to leave this comfort zone. I need you to leave the place we call heaven. All these great things. I need you to leave this. And I need you to go as man. And suffer some of the things men suffer. And in spite of all that, you're going to know this. Before you go, you're going to have people that's going to pluck your beard out. You're going to have people that's going to pierce your side with a sword. You're going to have those who's going to put a, a thorn of rose, thorn of, 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 I mean, a crown of thorns, thank you Ronnie on your head and those are the ones you're going to have to love even before you leave now, you're going to have to begin to love them now now, that takes love that takes a lot of love but when we begin to walk in the things of God and I'm going to say this and, and please don't shout me down but I'm telling you today, if you can't love like over here if you can't love, then you need to check your salvation meter, amen? I'm telling you, look, well, pastor, you don't know what they did to me. God, you don't know. Listen, we have to walk in forgiveness just like we walk in love. And the only way we can love somebody is if we forgive somebody. Now, I'm not here to, to belittle anything's ever happened to any of y'all. There, there are probably some things in this room that would just be crazy. Some of you have some horrific stories that things happen to you. But I'm telling you today that in spite of all those things that happen to you, God wants to love you and wants you to love others. And when you walk in that love, you begin to walk in the blessings in life that God has tended for you and I. God always wants to bless his people more than you can imagine for yourself. I was reading a story, and it was a story about this guy who was an atheist. And he was somewhat mad because he was working on a job that had a lot of Christians. And so he began to make some complaint. And he began to say, Man, all you Christians got all these holidays. Y'all got Christmas. Y'all got Easter. I'm atheist. We don't have no holidays for atheists. And some little boy raised his hand and said, Yeah, you do. He said, What? He said, April 1st. <laughs> Amen? Amen 
Only a fool believes there's no God. The Bible says that we know that he's God by the rising and the setting of the sun. Folks, we live in a day and an hour that God is pouring his blessings upon you. And you must believe that he wants to. We None of us deserve it. None of us are here saying, I deserve it. But I'm here to tell you that God wants it for you and I if we learn to operate and walk in it. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this gathering. God, I pray blessings on every man, woman, and child in this place. God, as we walk out these blessings in life that you intended for every one of us in this room to have, God, I know there are some today that for whatever reason find it very difficult. There are some in this room today, something I said really spark something in them and maybe even to the point where there's an area of their own personal life they might say pastor that's an area that i really need prayer in i'm not here to condemn you i'm not here to 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 point you out or embarrass you i'm here to pray for you and so if you're here this morning you might say pastor one of these areas you talked about looking to christ or learning or leaning or loving one of these areas that you really Maybe something that was said really ministered to you. And it's an area that you are saying today, Pastor, that's an area that I need prayer. Would you pray for me in that area of my life? Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking about. If that's you this morning, right where you at, just simply raise your hand up, put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else? Father, the only way that I'm able to stand here is because I totally depend on you. Father, I love you so much. Father, you give us an example. You say, as much as an earthly father loves his children, how much more do you love us? God, I know I love my children, so I know how much you love me. God, every hand in this room was raised because it's an area of their own life. They need prayer. Many hands and many reasons. And God, you know them all. You're a personal God. So God, I ask you, I ask you right now by the grace, by your mercy, by your love, that you begin to touch each one that raises hand. Each one in a special way that only you can. God, show yourself real in their situations. Show yourself real into their life. Show yourself real in their endeavors. Whatever they need, God, you're a God that supplies all those things. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Maybe you showed up this morning. Maybe you realized for the first time that you're lost in need of a Savior. Or maybe you showed up and you say, Pastor, I realized this morning there was a time I was serving the Lord, but I'm backslidden. If you want to get that right today, if you want Jesus in your life today, right there between you and the Father, from the heart, just begin to pray, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I repent. Jesus, come into my life today. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior, my Master and my King. Jesus, thank you for saving me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer this morning, just want to pray for you. Not embarrass you or call you out. Just want to lift you up. If that's you this morning, right where you at, just slip up your hand, put it up, put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hands all over. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you so much for saving your children. God, I thank you for saving those in this place this morning. God, I pray blessings on each and every one of them in a supernatural way. God, be with them. Watch over and guide them. As we honor you, God, get them plugged in. God, I pray they'll begin to fellowship with people that can speak life into them. God, whatever they need, you're God that supplies. You're never too short on your supply. Blessings be upon them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you receive that word, let's give God a hand this morning.